Good Shape, your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. With me in the studio is Christoph Müller from the German Red Cross. He's the head of first aid training. Hello and welcome to the show. When someone faints right in front of you, what's mm -hmm. the first thing you should do? Yeah, the first step is to, to approach the, per, the patient, check his vital functions, if he's breathing or not, conscious or not. Then you put him or her into a recovery position and ask somebody else to call for help. Yeah, so, so you have to get help to work in the team. Um, we got a viewer question from Ghana, and to Nit from Ghana, um, she said, when she calls an ambulance over in Ghana, mm -hmm. sometimes nobody will come because there's no ambulance. So mm -hmm. they just grab the patient and put, it, put him into the taxi and mm -hmm. then drive him to the hospital. Is this the right approach for that? Yeah. Well, under special conditions in remote areas, if there's no other way, you, you can do that. But then in this case, you have to accompany the patient if he is conscious. You have to take care of him. In case he has lost his consciousness, it's much better to transport him on a flat lorry, for example, where you can, uh, if, ne if needed, provide also CPR, ne? reanimation. Yeah, the CPR is a cardiopulmonary resuscitation, meaning mm -hmm. it's a heart massage. Mm -hmm. um, if you massage the heart, what's the right rate and rhythm you have to apply to the patient? Yeah. We are training internationally 100 compressions per minute, and after 30 compressions, you provide a mouse to nose or mouse to mouse breathing because it, it increases the impact. So it's a better outcome if you um, alternate the chest compression with the breathing part. But uh, some of my patients who have performed um, CPR mm -hmm. on, say, a relative or so, are a little bit scared if the face is injured, a mm -hmm. lot of saliva is there. So they say, perhaps, yeah, I don't want to give the mouth to mouth. Is it yeah. okay just to do this, the chest compression? Yes, it is. Um, especially in areas where an ambulance arrives fairly soon or a medical doctor can assist you. Um, it's, uh, it's okay, but we co recommend the combined method because it um, provides also the oxygen supply. Mm, the oxygen supply. So the heart massage, the chest compression, provides a blood pressure rise, but it mm -hmm. doesn't treat the uh, rhythm disturbance. But you've got a little pack mm -hmm. here, it's a live pack, it's an AED or an external defibrillator device. And you can find this in, in many airports nowadays or shopping malls. Could you just explain how it works? Yeah, this um, system here checks Call automatically. Now. Oh, it talks with you. Yes. Remove all clothing from patient's chest. Okay, so, so the voice is actually coming out of the machine and um, it, it, it tells um, the first aider what to do, so he doesn't have to read. Exactly. It gives you very clear instructions what to do and how to apply the electrodes in case the um, system decides to give an electronic shock. And this uh, shock will can restart the heart function. Um, there are some security measures which you have to take. Do not touch the patient, but the, the, the system here gives you a very clear instruction and you can make no mistake. Mm -hmm. so, so you can't make any mistake. So it's a, the, the best thing is if a patient is unconscious and you find him and have got an AED device there, um, just put it on and you can't break anything? No, you cannot. Because the system is actually diagnosing the patient's condition, the heart functions, not always a defibrillation is necessary, but it comes out with a medical analysis and it tells you also how to protect yourself. Mr. Miller, let's talk a little bit about road accidents. In many countries, they're on the rise. So, so what do I do first when I'm driving my car to see there's a road accident mm -hmm. and some patients are lying on the road? Yes. The first um, recommendation is to react carefully, stop the car, switch on your emergency lights, park at the right side and do not put yourself in danger. Mm -hmm. Then the driver leaves the vehicle while um, other passengers are launching the emergency call. You check the situation at the accident scene and react accordingly. Yeah. So and often many patients are bleeding after a road accident. So, mm -hmm. so as a first aider, can I help stop the bleeding? Yes, you can. The first measure is simply to apply pressure to a bleeding. You do it with your bare hands or even better with a, with a clear handkerchief. Later on, you apply a sterile gauze and, uh, and a pressure bandage from your first aid kit. But the first reaction is to put 
pressure and stop the bleeding. And to just put it right onto the bleeding and onto the wound and not, not um, on a different region like with a belt like nope. we did uh, previous time. Nope. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, next to the road injuries, um, nose bleeding. It's, it's mm -hmm. a bleeding as well, but you can't apply pressure on the nose, can you? Well, that is not too comfortable for a patient. What you do is um, you ask somebody to sit down if he's conscious, to bend his chest and his head forward. Mm -hmm. Then you apply a cold pack or a wet towel onto the neck of the patient. Mm -hmm. And then um, this releases already pain. In case the bleeding doesn't stop, the, the patient can, of course, close its own nose for a while until a doctor is found. Mm. And in many situations where a patient bleeds, it's very scary for the first aider. Mm -hmm. So it's a psychological burden like mm -hmm. in, in road accidents. Mm -hmm. Is there any help for the first aider to cope with that situation? Yeah, one uh, recommendation is definitely to protect yourself to wear gloves. Okay. In most first aid kits, worldwide gloves are included. You ask other uh, bystanders for help you call the emergency and the switchboard staff can also supervise you what you are doing if you're not really sure. So you communicate with uh, helpers, but also with the police, the rescue service and the patient. That is very important. So it's easier to work in a team and, and get some supervision from, from some experts. Yes, then. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in, in warmer countries and in summer times in Germany, some mm -hmm. patients are developing a heat stroke, mm -hmm. meaning sitting in the sun and feeling dizzy a little bit. Um, so how do you recognize a heat stroke? Yeah. A heat stroke is often the consequence of uh, heavy physical activity um, in, an, uh, in a very hot sun, um, a loss of fluid, mm -hmm. and the patients are, have a high body temperature, they feel dizzy sometimes, they might have already a headache or they, um, they have a, a bad stomach. So important is to evacuate people from the direct sun, give them something to drink, they have to cool down and relax. And then if needed, you call an ambulance. Mm -hmm. A lot of things to learn when you want to be a lifesaver and uh, a first aider, but uh, first aid can be a lifesaver. So when is the right point in life to start the training? Yeah. We recommend actually to start already um, in schools, in primary schools to educate children, even in kindergarten, they can learn basics what to do if you have cut your finger, and they can overcome the fear to help somebody else as an adult. Just and we recommend school. also continuous repetition of first aid trainings at least on a five-year basis. That's a very important thing because you have to train it, otherwise you lose it. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, Mr. Müller, for being with us in the studio. Thank you. Thank you. One organization that provides first aid courses worldwide is the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. You can find out more at this web address, ifrc.org. They offer courses in several languages. Just find a branch close to where you live.